Welcome back to ACSS 101. In this video, we are going to continue our exploration of Content Grid, specifically looking at more advanced use cases of Content Grid, like nested Content Grids, and using Content Grid in a scenario like a blog template where it actually has uh, unprecedented flexibility for control over your layouts. Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna share my screen. What we are gonna do is edit the blog post template for this website. I'm gonna show you how to set up the proper structure here. I'll start from scratch. Uh, I'll show you how to set up the proper structure here um, so that you can mimic this. And then we'll go into the block editor and see what Content Grid actually allows us to do by nesting Content Grid within other Content Grids. Okay, I'm gonna start by adding a section element. This is gonna be our general structure. Now, Content Grid has its own gutter. So what I need to do first, because I don't want duplicate gutters, is to clear out the gutter on this section element. The left and right padding needs to be set to zero. The second thing is this inner container is unnecessary. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the inner container because Content Grid controls content containment itself. It has the gutter on its own. It has content containment on its own. It doesn't need any other elements, okay? So you can just have a box. And what we need to do with this box is put dynamic data inside of it. Now, the dynamic data element that pulls content from the block editor is called the post content element in Bricks. So we're going to add the post content element to the page. Now, it just kind of sits here. It doesn't actually give you the, the correct visual representation of how it's behaving. So it's a little confusing at first. We're gonna flip back and forth between this view and the front end so that you can see exactly what's happening. And I'll do that at every step of the process, okay? So right now we don't have any content grid. All we, do, all we have right now is a box with some block padding, and then we have this post content element. The content grid class is going to go on the post content element itself. This section is essentially just a wrapper, okay? So we're gonna put content grid right here on that element. And you can see it changed a little bit, okay? Um, really, it's, it's going full width, all right? But you can't really see it in the builder. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit save. We do have a content post content element in there, so we should, if we go view a blog post, uh, let me go back to the admin here, and we'll go to posts, and we'll just say view. I wanna view a blog post, and there you go. Here's what we've got so far. This is pulling the block editor content for that blog post into a blank section. Now, by default, the width of this content is the content width of my website. That's what Content Grid defaults to. It defaults to the content width of your website. So if I go to Layout, Website Dimensions, 1366, and I measure this paragraph width, you're gonna see that it is in fact 1366. So that is the default. Now I wanna change the default because wide content like that for something like a blog post is not a good idea. Never a good idea to have wide content like that. It's too much eye scanning. It doesn't look good. We want a more tight, concise column. So one thing you need to know about Content Grid, and I'm gonna do this just at the ID level because this is a template. I'm gonna go to CSS. You can override the content width of Content Grid at any time, just like you can with any other section or box or whatever, okay? So I'm gonna go with root, and then I'm just gonna write double dash content, uh, not Content Grid, Content Width, and I'm gonna say 60 characters, and I'm gonna hit save. So I have redefined Content Width at this container level. Now I could put that here on the section, I could put that here on the actual post content element, it actually doesn't really matter, it's gonna inherit either way. But now what I'm gonna do is go back and refresh this and you can see the change. Now we have a nice narrow kind of centered column uh, that we can start uh, manipulating with Content Grid. Well, there's one thing left that I have to do before I do anything else though. If you have auto spacing turned on, because the content, the post content element is technically a block level or a, of, I'm sorry, a flex element, it will get auto gap. All right, and so what we need to do, we obviously don't want gaps because our headings and our paragraphs, they already have margins. We don't want auto gap. All I'm gonna do is under that declaration of redefining content grid, I'm just gonna say gap zero. 
And then you're gonna see I have no gaps. Now all of the spacing is coming from smart spacing in automatic CSS, which is exactly what I want. And now I'm ready to rock and roll. I've got my content grid structure set up. So now I'm ready to go to the block editor and see what we can actually do with this. So I'm gonna go edit post. And this is gonna bring us into the block editor. Okay, so I'm gonna open the structure view so that you guys can see the actual structure of what I'm doing. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a new kind of visual section, uh, like a traditional edge to edge section between this first little uh, content group and the second group of content right here. So I'm gonna come down here and I am going to add what Gutenberg or the block editor calls a stack. And this is just a box that is set to flex column by default. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a stack here. And inside of my stack, I'm gonna add three things. I'm gonna add an image, I'm gonna add a heading, and I'm gonna add some text, okay? So we're gonna do an image, and I'm going to let's go to the media library. We'll select this watch, okay? The next thing I'm going to add uh, is a heading. And we'll say this is a heading. And then this is a paragraph inside a uh, inside what looks to be a traditional section structure, okay? Perfect. Now, I'm going to stop there so we can just look at what's going on on the front end. Let's go ahead and save and let's go back to view our post on the front end. So here you go. Doesn't look very exciting right now, but it's going to get very exciting. We have an image and a, and a heading and text inside of this container. Now, when you are in the block editor, because the block editor does not have custom classes, it does not have BIM, it doesn't, you are essentially relegated to ut a, a utility first approach. So you're gonna need your utility classes turned on and automatic CSS, but then you're free to use the CSS classes box to put in utility classes and start to manipulate the structure of what's going on. Now, you may not see this CSS classes box. This is a feature of automatic CSS if you have it turned on. So what you need to do is in your panel, you're gonna go under options, you're gonna go under Gutenberg, and you're gonna make sure that class first workflow is toggled. And if you toggle that, it is going to take the CSS classes box and place it up here so that it's easy to access, easy to use, easy to see, right? Um, so that's one enhancement from automatic CSS that you're gonna wanna turn on. Now, I'm gonna grab this stack and we'll just do some basic utility classes to get started here. For example, I want this to behave like a section. So I'm gonna say section M, that's gonna be my medium section, right? Or my default section spacing. That's gonna get me a gutter, that's gonna get me um, the block padding that's necessary, okay. The next thing I'm gonna do is say BG ultra light. That's gonna get me my ultra light background color. Now I wanna stop there and let's just go to the front end and see what we've got. I said we would kind of do this in pieces so that it's easy for you to follow along. So now this is what I've got, which isn't very exciting because it, it kind of just looks like a card, uh, but it's super contained inside of this column that we created. It definitely doesn't look like a section. It's not going to the edges of the screen, right? And you're going to also notice because it's a container inside of my blog post, it's not getting smart spacing and it's not getting gaps. It has all of its spacing zeroed out so that I can use gaps effectively or I can optionally all, uh, opt for, optionally opt for, that's fantastic. Uh, we can opt for smart spacing if we want to. Here's how you control this, okay? On your stack, this little group of content, you can do one of two things. You can say smart spacing, which will now apply smart spacing in this container. Or if you just wanna use gaps, you can use gaps. You could do gap M, you could do gap S, you could do content gap, right? All of these options are available for you, right? I'll do gap S for now. Let's save, let's go back and let's see. Uh, and now we have content spaced out using small gap. All right, now comes the fun part, the actual content grid part, right? So one thing that we should know is that we can span the width of this element however much we want. We can feature it, we can feature max it, or we can go all the way to the edges with content width full, right? All right, so let me show you first. We'll do content double dash feature, and I'm gonna hit save. We'll see what this does. Let's go to the front end. Okay, notice it gets a little bit wider than the content around it. 
okay? Now let's do something called feature max. So I'm gonna go, instead of feature, I'm gonna write feature max. We'll go ahead and hit save. And we'll see that it comes out a little bit more. And I wanna refresh your memory that you have control over all of this. If I go to layout and I go to uh, content grid, I can see my feature width and my feature max width right here, and I can control their dimensions, all right? There's another one which is called full uh, safe, okay? So we're gonna try full safe right here. Save and refresh, okay? And this is going to add uh, that it's gonna ensure that you have a gutter if you haven't used like a section class, okay? Um, it, so you can read about this in the documentation. I already used a section class here on this element, so I actually don't need full safe. I'm gonna use full. It's gonna pretty much look exactly the same, okay? But I did wanna mention that it is there if you're not using uh, a section type structure, okay? So now it's just content double dash full, and I'm gonna go ahead and hit save and I'm gonna refresh, and you're gonna see it's exactly the same, right? Now I have this section, this kind of visual section. Uh, we, remember, we started in this cramped little column, and now suddenly we're way out here, right? But now watch this. I am actually going to nest content grid inside of another content grid. I'm gonna tell this stack that I just created to behave as a content grid itself, and I want you to watch what happens, right? So I am going to go over here and say content grid, save, and then we're gonna go back and refresh. And miraculously, I have the visual effect of a new section of content, but my content inside of it is going back to the original content width. And I could actually redefine the content width if I wanted to. Um, now, Gutenberg doesn't make this easy because it doesn't give you any place to write custom CSS, but you could do it with a custom class if you wanted to. You can make your own custom utility classes. Um, or what you can do, if you have a stack inside of a stack, okay? So we're gonna add, uh, let's add another stack in here. So let's add another stack like this, okay? Let's go back to the list view. Let's make sure this stack is inside of my stack. Let's put the image in there. Let's put the heading in there. Let's put the paragraph in there. Is everything still in the right order? Nope, it's switching my heading, okay? Uh, oh, I don't, all right, there we go. All right, save. All right, let's go back and let's look at what's going on on the front end. Now I lost my gap because I put things in a new stack. So I'm gonna need to say gap S on there. Let's go ahead and save. That'll bring my gap back. Very nice. But now what I have is I have another container in here that is grouping this content where I can actually come in and I can say content feature max, right? And I can hit save and we'll wait for it to finish saving. We'll wait for it to finish saving. The block editor, uh, for some reason, sometimes it just likes to take a long time to save. Let's see. Okay, it's, it's already saved. It just hasn't confirmed that it's saved. But look at now, I have a content grid inside of a content grid and the things inside of that content grid, it's a little bit inception-y, can be featured or feature maxed or fold or whatever. And, and you can just keep layering content grids inside of content grids to essentially do whatever you want and whatever you need to do. And you can do this all the way down the page. You could actually take a narrow column blog post template not use any narrow column content, just use full page content uh, as if it's a normal page. And this is all done because of the flexibility and the power of Content Grid. So this was your introduction to kind of an advanced use of Content Grid, nesting Content Grids, how to still feature, feature max, feature full things inside of nested Content Grids. What I really need you to do uh, is go, uh, oh, one one other thing. Okay, let's let's. I'm sorry. I just remembered one other thing. If these were not in a in a stack, right? Um, you could, in fact, let's take them back to where we had them before, and just show you that any of these individual elements, by the way, because um, this stack is a content grid. So I could take something like the image. I could say aspect sixteen nine, right? And that's going to get me a sixteen by nine. If I can type. Uh, it's gonna get me a 16 by nine aspect ratio on this image. And then I can say content feature max on just this image, right? So I can save 
Let's go back on the front end. So now I have a 16 by nine image and it's going to the feature max zone while the rest of the content below it is staying in the normal uh, content width of this particular content grid. It's insane flexibility, insane flexibility. You can do almost anything you want with the layouts. You can have, and this is very, very good for blog post layouts, especially because people love to do this kind of very interesting stuff in blog post templates where normally once you set that kind of narrow layout for your content, you're confined within that. And then we had to do crazy stuff like breakout classes and you're really just you're going against the grain and against the HTML at that point, whereas Content Grid, you're actually not going against the HTML. You are leveraging the power of the CSS grid structure to effectively do whatever you want. You can get very, very creative with the kind of stuff you're putting inside of blog posts. Um, and, and again, you don't have to add any of this to the template. You're doing it at the blog post level with simple utility classes. You need to practice with it. You need to experiment with it to see the full power and the full flexibility of this. But this is an advanced use of Content Grid. I'll be back very, very soon with more lessons in ACSS 101. Cheers.